So we're going to wait a couple yes, minutes. Is being recorded. Perfect. Um, we're going to wait a couple minutes. Hi, Amber. How are you? Good. I'm going to stop my video and listen because I'm no, driving. You're to totally fine. Um, some people are um, brave enough to do it, and then other people, uh, it's, I totally get it. <laughs> so I want oh, you to do whatever you feel um, comfortable doing. It's just that I'm driving, so I'm trying to be safe, but I really wanted to listen to this. So. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, we have an influencer here in town um, I, who I love, hate. I tried advertising with him and he didn't do anything for the money that I gave him. So I'm still kind of butthurt over it. <laughs> but he, he, he was doing a live while he was driving. I go, you are not that important. <laughs> I'm really, is there an emergency? Why are you doing a live while you're driving? <laughs> so <laughs> it's, and then he, he reached out to me. He's like, I really do apologize. That was a bad decision. Right. I totally get that. So, um, and I'm not saying, I, I think having no video is um, less tempting to, and then you're more likely to just listen instead of watch. Um, Cause I get it. I see people on their phones in the car. I'm guilty of it every once in a while too. You know, my husband texts me and I'm like, you're going to have to wait. I'm driving. Um, I know it's so hard. <laughs> it, it is hard. Cause you, you know, you want to respond back because it's immediate, right? I, mean, I can do this. And then, you know, something could happen and you don't want to be that no one wants to be that person like when you go when I go through school pickup we have a really large truck and there are some of the parents who it, it, it's five miles an hour I go less than five miles because I have a really big truck I don't want to be the parent that runs over someone else's kid on accident and there are some of the parents they buzz through there at 25 I'm like holy Toledo <laughs> it's, it's just um taking a chance i don't think they think they're going to have anything happen so i was like i don't ever want to be a witness to any of that stuff um we're going to wait just another minute and then it might just be the three of us last time we had like eight or nine people hop on and off i know um the time change can be confusing what state are you calling from amber um i'm in illinois okay so you guys aren't too far like um kara's in montana i'm in arizona and um it's I love Arizona. because we don't change time at all. Like there is no daylight savings time for us. See, and that's what I want. Like, I really want to move to Arizona. I've been there and I just like, I fell in love with it. I have an aunt that lives in Tucson. I don't necessarily like the Tucson area. That's not where I would want to go to, but I don't know. I just it's love really close people. to the border. So you can, you get a lot of stuff that border issue stuff that down there, but I, I I've been to the gym show when I'm um, in another lifetime. I was actually a jewelry designer and I used to do $20,000 buy. So I would go to the premium where they had that you had to go through the guards and show your credentials. And um, I would never be able to afford to buy anything inside there, but I did try on lots of very beautiful pieces of jewelry. Um, there is, I like the downtown area of Tucson. I think they're finally done with all the construction on the freeway that went on for like 15 years. <laughs> so, um, Sierra Vista is a small in between town. So it's in between, um, Tucson and Phoenix. So that's a small town up like here where I am. I'm in Prescott. So, um, oh, I know. Like that. Yeah. My best friends had family that um that we're living there because you guys like still get snow and stuff sometimes too right right we don't get a lot we get like you know if, if we usually get one or two storms it brings like 12 inches or two feet and then it's over this year we had eight storms roll through but we never got enough to spawn which is very like they cancel school and we can't go sledding on the hill around the corner right <laughs> so <laughs> trying to entertain them but uh, yeah, no, we get um, a little bit of snow. We have four seasons. There's national forests on all four sides. Sedona is an hour away from us. Jerome is about 35, 40 minutes. Um, it's, it's a great, I mean, there, if you are outdoorsy and you like this type of atmosphere, it's, it's a great place to live. Yeah, I like being outdoors. Like I'm so tired of Illinois, but like I have all my kids here. So it's kind of hard for me to even try and think of relocating. I was like, I have a two-year-old, and then my next one is like a ten-year-old. I have five kids. Um, oh wow! But yeah, but I was like basing it off of my ten-year-old. I'm like, okay, in about eight years, she'll be eighteen, and then maybe I can. But then I'll be like forty-eight. <laughs> so old. <laughs> yeah, you have to just. Kids are pretty flexible. 
So you have to decide what's best for you and your family. Definitely. I, um, one summer I, how I ended up in Arizona, I'll give you a really short synopsis of what happened. I, um, was living with this guy that I was financially supporting. How many of us have done that? And, um, his mother died on new year's Eve, new year's day. She wink, wink, fell in the pool and drowned. Um, so it, it, ha- it started this whole chain of events. So this person who I supported for four or five years, um, sacrificed a lot of things for, to make him happy, um, inherited, um, this is at the height of the market in California. This was like, oh, six, oh, seven. He inherited, uh, it was the final, I, we figured, the only reason why I figured out is because I had to send over the documents. So he inherited like $6 million in cash and then 12 homes valued at like $9 million and then all of this other stuff. So instead of coming to me saying, honey, 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 I, I, you know, inherited all the stuff he gave me, he goes, you have 30 days to get out. <laughs> so <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but I wasn't laughing then. So, um, my I, aunt, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so my aunt um said why don't you come out to Arizona and check it out and so my kids went on vacation my adult children back to their father's house in Massachusetts at the time and I I liked it so much like when they were gone over summer break I moved here <laughs> so when I went to go pick them up at the airport I'm like we moved <laughs> so <laughs> and I've been here ever since I've been out here 20 years so <laughs> that's the the short version of um, what happened to me and how I ended up in Arizona. <laughs> but yeah, at the time you. I couldn't, I didn't um, laugh about it very much. I was really mad. <laughs> my my younger kid's father is supposed to come into like a half million dollars. Um, like on a personal note, he's kind of been just like super rude lately to me and saying that like screw it like screw everybody and I'm like hmm and like I'm gonna block you today so when you said that I was like man sounds like that's what it's about to happen to me right now <laughs> like uh, money does weird things to people and you can really see the value system is the lesson I learned but in any case it's 9 10 let's let's get started with your questions I'm happy to answer um realistic questions. Um, if you have long-term questions and we need to get on a one-on-one call and I can send you a payment link, but these are, um, meant, I, I want to be able, and you guys have heard me all say this before. I want to be able to help as many of you as possible. Um, a little bit about me in case you don't know is I, uh, used to own a seven figure business that I sold in 2019, um, right before my brother passed away. And I wasn't quite done with the cleaning industry and I wanted to do something different and have really an impact and value in my industry. So that's when I opened up made-broker.com and um, and then Clean Freaks University had been around since 2015. So I spend a lot of my time teaching people how to run the back end of their business. Um, And I'm here as a support system. So I'm the bottom of the pyramid pushing you guys up. Um, we legitimately inside the group have had 15 people hit over the hundred K mark, and then they're well on their way to the quarter million and their second year conservatively. So it, it, a lot of the advice that I've given, thankfully (laughs) works, it's not gospel. Um, you know, if you don't feel that I'm offering you value, please do your due diligence. I try to give you the best, most current value, um, information that I've come across, but sometimes you know, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not just, that's my legal disclaimer is I'm here to try to give you as much advice as you can to make yourself successful inside the group. So does anyone have any specific questions that they would like to ask? Well, I am at the, I guess. Good I'm morning, Sheila. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little further along and I, I want to prepare my business for sale. Okay. And I need to know as much as possible. Okay. So um, do you, I, and, and it's been a while since we've spoken. Right. I can't remember. Do you own the building that you operate out of or are you doing it entirely? I out operate of- out of my home now. I had, uh, since COVID, I, I, you know, I don't have a reason to have a building. <clears throat> They're right. all independent contractors. They all have their insurance. We check every 30 days. <clears throat> and they're long-term. Uh, workers, they've been with me on average uh, six, seven years. Okay. 
That's um, nice. Because I, I, I look for mature people. It's getting hard to find, but, but anyway, so that's, that's my story. Okay. So with that, um, when people, here comes Jamie, um, when people start to look for businesses to purchase, they want it to be turnkey. So that's like smooth running. Right. And that's, that's what your operating is. Um, they look at the, how many reviews you have. So if you have, you know, five reviews versus 500 reviews, you're going to have more of a perceived value. Each okay. one of those reviews in the eyes of the purchaser is what is roughly, and this is just my opinion, um, about five to $7,000 each. We know that, you know, having five-star reviews is worth like 25 grand in business minimal. Um, and it takes 40 five-star reviews to negate one bad review. So that's just a, a byline to go by. They also look at, um, you know, your website. Do you have a fluent website that's easy to operate? I know that you're in Booking Koala, so you clearly have forms on your website. Um, and they, they look for streamlined processes. Having turnkey employees as a bonus, that could easily add, you know, a hundred grand onto the total value of your business. Okay. So when you say, all so when you say turn key employees, what does that mean? Right. That means that if I bought your business today, I could actually step in your shoes and you're, there would no be, there would not be any disruption of business. Okay. Um, and then they look at your client list. So they value how many clients you have. So if you have a hundred biweekly clients and 25 monthly clients, that has a perceived value as well. And if you had had a building, then it would be considered, um, there's two types of um, sales. There's an asset sale. And then there's, um, I can't think of the word off the top of my head. It's the list. You're selling your customer list with your employees and then your five-star reviews and your website and all that other stuff. And your branding plays a lot into it as well. Oh, okay. So I need to work on my reviews. Okay. Yes. So now, is it better to go with a company? Is it better to go... You know, I put it up and I did get a lot of um, inquiries from other cleaning services. These are cleaning services that have businesses in this city and that city. And, you know, I just don't think that is that they are that great. But, right. you know, that's, what do I know? In, in well, retrospect, I, because I, hi, Jamie, did you have something hi, to say? I, yeah, because I have something to add because I just went through nice job and added them on for to my website for reviews oh and awesome so um it is a fee a month however just like shannon was saying it uh really bumped since since getting that i've gotten three reviews just That's and awesome. i just got it what wednesday so they automatically, okay. as soon as they're done, they automatically spit, or, you know, because I use Jobber. Mm -hmm. We close the job out. As soon as we close the job out, it goes either to an email or to a text message. But let me tell you something, Jamie. I have them now. And what I did, I stopped automating because that's how I got my one bad review that she's talking about. And you're saying it takes 40 reviews to erase saying. that bad review. He was awful. He was there awful. Are, there, unfortunately, there are the, they're out there and they people will look at your response. So when you respond as professionally and killing them with kindness helps a lot. And yeah. just, you just have to keep marching on. I don't think people realize the impact of what a bad review does so oh, he I actually was just a terrible person um, that's I'm yeah. sorry that really sucks yeah, yeah it does but yeah you're gonna have to work on getting your reviews yeah. up um how much is a nice job Jamie uh it's about 70 Whoa. I was uh, is it 70 oh no 80? uh oh it's cutting out five dollars a month $25? Well, I got it for $25 a month. You, you, well, well, I told her, I, how did you get well, that? Well, because I told her, I was like, I, I killed her with kindness. I told her, uh, <laughs> I, said, yeah, I told her, I was like, man, I'm paying out crazy amount of money right now. And I was like, I, I just need to know if I like you guys or not. And, you know, and well, maybe that's a temporary, maybe that's an introductory. Maybe thing. it is. 
maybe yeah, it is I, you, however, right. I, however, she like hasn't said anything to me, but we'll see. We'll see. Right. And, it you know, me about $75. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it looks nice to have, I, but then I cut it off. I didn't cut it out, cut it out. I reduced the frequency. I said that I will tell them when to ask for a review. And I think that was bad because I my average is 4.6. I just didn't want it to go any lower. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, so I told sure. them that, for, that they, I don't want them to post anything with a four star or lower. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good well, I told them three star. Does a four star help? Um, so there is um, a big thing right now in Airbnb because I'm part of that Facebook group and they um, Airbnb is making it so it's making Airbnb is this big conglomerate, which I think that we shouldn't really have large corporations, my opinion. <laughs> but they they make it so impossible. So it's it's a double-edged sword. So these homeowners who have these STRs, if they get below a 4.8, they get thrown off the website, the platform. They cannot like sell, they cannot rent their property. It, so it's this like constantly having to perform. And I get why they have to do that because there's certain standards, obviously that should be happening. And there's awful posts and, you know, but it's it's come to the point now where you really need to have as many five-star reviews you, you as you can have. However, on the the bad side, if you go to Castle, and you guys have all heard me say that, if you go back to Yelp and you go to Castle Keeper Cleaning in Prescott, I still have one bad one-star review from the lady who was not a nice individual. She was, she was off, and I didn't catch it when I took her on. We went in and we recleaned everything, and it was just stuff. It was stuff that needed to be repainted. I can't, I'm not a, I'm not a painter. We're just cleaners, right? And then it became this dynamic of then not only did we clean it for free the second time, then she wanted her a refund on top of it. And I was just like, it's not happening. So there, this sits, it sits on Castle Keeper Cleaning thing. Like what, it's been seven, eight years. It still sits there. <laughs> oh, you see, there's some people who know how to work the system. She knew. It, they're unpleasant individuals and karma will catch up to them is my mentality. I just, yeah, I choose kindness. Well, you need the reviews. Right. So um, getting your reviews. Um, having a system in place, I'm, I actually might check out Nice Job. That sounds interesting to try. And But just know, too, if you don't advertise with Google or Yelp, when you get to a certain threshold of reviews, they'll wipe them clean. So then all of your hard work is like just thrown out the window, right? So it's a double-edged sword. So you can use Google because, well, let's be honest, Google gives us free things. We are the product. But when you get to a certain point, if you don't contribute back into what you're doing, they just wipe them off and they say, oh, sorry. Okay, you're now, please explain that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So hypothetically, yeah. I don't know what the threshold is because it's changed. Right. It used to be if you got to 50 five-star reviews and you didn't advertise, like I do Google certified right now, it's two grand a month. Um, if you didn't advertise with them at all, any ad dollars, they will throw off your, they'll just shave them off. You won't have 55 star reviews, you'll have 10. Oh, so that if you're so you going to, we all need the reviews. Like it's a, it's a double, it's to force you to advertise with them. Yelp does the same thing. You can have, you know, X amount of reviews before they go, okay, you need to pay up or we're going to shave these off. Okay, now you said that I you're did. certified. Is yeah. that the same thing as guaranteed? Yeah, Google guaranteed, Google okay. certified. Okay, so how much money do you spend? I'm spending two grand a month and I am getting about 60 calls out of it and I'm closing it. And I usually, in a good economy, I can close about 10 to 15 of them. I've been closing about six, six to eight a month. So what is that? Six into 2,000 is what? It's expensive. It's, um, it's 2,000 because we tried to lower it to see if I could still get some ROI out of it divided by six. So it's $333 a lead, but I've been, I've gotten biweekly like large clients out of it, like Good. you know, That's seven eight thousand dollar accounts. Pays for so, yeah. Right. So and we know that each house cleaning client is a two to three hundred dollar cost to acquire to get into your circle. And then there's other costs, you know, you have to prove, you know, it takes like four or five cleanings. There's this dynamic that has to happen. So um, just, it ends up yeah. working out itself, but it's it's expensive. I wish I could lower it like to a thousand, then it, I wouldn't feel so 
butthurt about it. But right, it is right. just, it's the economy is so weird right now that I I had to keep putting fire in it to make it work. I'm like, this blows. Because three years ago, I didn't have to spend that much money. Yeah, I can't afford two thousand a month. I think I would rather spend that on or, uh, organic SEO. Right. Um, I have that going as well. Um, but that takes, as you know, that's a long game and it takes months. But it only takes my like, your website, does. I believe, has been up there for years. It's not gonna take you that long. Well, can you guys explain what the organic SEO is? What is that? Um it's this is what my my husband, who is a plumber, has organic SEO. So he pays someone to write articles on his website. So if you were to oh, catalog okay. how many articles he has, he's got like two thousand pages that are all attached to his website. So when they look for Prescott um, plumbers, his name pops right up at the top. But he's on every search engine there is, and he pays someone every month to do that for him because he's not tech savvy. Um, when you are playing, I, I just hired. Yeah, I just hired a. Um, he, I call him my advertising guy. So I was only giving him a hundred dollars a month, right? So now I bumped it up, and we're. I told him, I said, I just, I want to get out of the newspaper. That's not my, the target, my target people, client. I want to get, start getting built up on Google. So I bumped up my, my price to 250 a month. And that will literally open up for me, open every, all the new, whoever, wherever they search, I'll start popping up now and all the news. Outlets. I think that your area that is, is ripe for a professional cleaning service. So it's, I don't, I wouldn't encourage you at this time to spend a lot of money trying to That's attract exactly. because you're, it's so ripe and ripe for the picking. I would, I would keep it at that lower price and see what your ROI is before you bump it up higher. Yeah. That's what I told them. I, we, we had a really good long 45 minute talk and, um, yeah, I didn't feel like I was being take walked on, taken advantage of, but yeah. So I'm I'm learning all this stuff. That's why. I, sorry to interrupt. That's what it's I was complicated. Just it really. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. so many different layers. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of layers. And you know what? I have just decided I'm going to do my own SEO. I've been reading a lot about it. I I must have invested about twenty five thousand over the years. I'm just not oh. going to do it. Because I don't know what these people are doing when you give them five hundred dollars, and then yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough now to go in the back and see what's going on. They're doing right. nothing, <laughs> <laughs> and I have read enough, and so I, I, I made some changes here and there, and my numbers went up based on what I've oh, seen. Awesome. From YouTube, YouTube has a lot of good people. You do some of the things they say to do. And that's good, yeah. but I'm okay. just not going to do it anymore. I'm going to do it myself. Um, only in that I've been in this thing for so long, and I have read so much. Why not? Because if you're really just throwing good money at the bad money, it's ridiculous. With right. Enjoy. Keep us posted. I'm curious as this because oh, you my. could be the next SEO expert, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to know. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. be an expert, but you know. That's what I decided, well, you know. I, I think that's awesome. So that's, those are the things I would work on to increase the value. Mm -hmm. um, and you, and I, the, this is the long dissertation of what I was getting to. If I um, had gone through a broker when I sold Castle Keeper Cleaning, I feel not knowing what I know now, cause I'm more seasoned at it, um, that I could have gotten probably 25% more on top of what I got. But like I said, I didn't, when I started, I wasn't even thinking about selling my business. I had someone randomly call me and offer me like 10 grand. I started laughing, right? And then he, then he offered me 50 grand. I started laughing even more. I hung up the phone on him each time. I'm like, you know, I, I can't be bothered. Whatever's going on with you, I don't care. And then when he really came up with a big chunk of change, I was like, let's talk. But um, I feel that if I had gone to a broker... Um, he could have negotiated harder for me because I didn't know all the ins and outs of what I was doing. But the next time I sell a business, I, I'll have definitely experience to do it. So your suggestion is when selling a business, I would get better treatment through a broker? Yes. And I would look for someone who is a broker in cleaning businesses. Um, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. I know there's been a, several in the industry who have sold businesses or purchase lists or assets 
bits and pieces from actual other cleaning business owners in their area. But um, I feel that, that their knowledge, the first time I think that you should definitely do a broker so that you're, it's like when you, the first time you use, you buy a house, right? You go through yeah. the real estate process. And after you buy like eight or nine houses, you're like, I don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless yeah. it's a large yeah. purchase, like several million dollars, then you want someone involved because there's so much money involved. But I, I think that it is something that if you educate yourself, like with your SEO, that you could do by yourself and still get a good profit. Well, I did have someone in the groups who said that he has um, sold lots of cleaning businesses. Oh, awesome. But I guess I just, I, you know, being this was my first time, I wasn't sure how things were to be set up. Right. So I asked him to put everything in writing. He wanted $2,000. And I said, so what are you going to do with that $2,000 now? Because I'm thinking about how a realtor sells property, you know, right. so I'm, I'm just learning. And I said, if you could put everything in writing, I would appreciate that. And then you get the 2000 I never heard from him. So right. I don't know. It's, um, we're such an instantaneous, instant gratification society right now. I mean, uh, you and I have been doing this a long time. There wasn't Facebook when I started. I had to figure I I lived legitimately there were two books, right? <laughs> I bought one off the internet, one from the bookstore. There it's we've become such an instantaneous society unless unless it's going to be an immediate thing and they get the instant gratification, most people 99% of the time will not follow up through. That's how come people like you and me can mm -hmm rise above everything because we we just take it and we're like okay this is what i'm going to do but you're going to mm -hmm. find that the right person will land in your lap um when when you need it right it's it's mm -hmm. kind of blind faith but when you it just gotta put it out there i'm looking for someone and then start to talk to them and see mm -hmm. you know what they're going to do as far as working from a real estate perspective real estate people have their own like they have to pay into the broker in, in the state mm -hmm. of Arizona, it's a 6% commission. So the broker gets 3%, the real estate agent gets 3%. And then if they have a team, they have to divvy out, you get 20.25% or however it breaks down. But there are costs involved. And I'm surprised if he's sold that many businesses that he didn't have paper to go, right? right. Everybody um, usually has something. Who gives up $2,000 without paperwork, you know? Right, or at least a PDF, or here's my 10-step guide if you want to work with mm -hmm. me more extensively, here is my price, that type mm -hmm. of thing. But um, the, the right person will come along. I, I've seen your post about wanting to get to the point of selling and, mm -hmm. and moving on to other things. You know, it's, as we all know, life is short. I, it's just, right. <laughs> I want to do, I'm, I'm ready for vacation. I can't wait till my kids get out. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> how many more weeks do we have a school left, right? Because I'm, I'm done, right? I just want, I need to have a break. I want to start doing other things. My mom is getting older. I need to go check on her more often. She lives in Irvine. So it's just, you know, it, life is short. And I, I want to make sure that we're enjoying it as much as possible. And I encourage everyone, especially to enjoy it because we just, we just don't know. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions? Then keep on going. I'll answer anything you want. Um, I Got two of you at once. Uh, so I got to go and do bids right now. So. No, no worries at all. You can just listen if you want. Amber, did you have a question? Um, so you can hear me, right? I can. Um, so when I started cleaning, I did it more as like a side hustle because I wanted money back in like 2019. Okay. And I had a, you know, a couple of clients, but then I had gotten pregnant and then COVID happened. And then like my partner and I kind of like decided that I'm not going to do it anymore. So I stopped and then I reopened in September of 2022 and I'm, I'm doing okay. And I'm doing it by myself. Mostly I have a helper that's helped me now like four times. So I'm, I'm kind of like at the bottom of the pyramid, I, or I guess you could say, where I want to build up my business the right way and just mm -hmm. trying to also put money aside to get like a mentor or a coach because I know like at this point, that's probably what I need to get to the next level because like I can book the cleanings and all of this, but I'm, I'm 40 
and I don't want to be the cleaner anymore. I want to build something, whether that's to eventually give to my family as a, as a business, like my children, or even potentially like sell it, like how you ladies have sold businesses or thinking about selling a business. So I, I feel like I'm getting a lot of good information when I reach that point, I guess. Um, I, I really don't know like what my question is right now. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just trying to get everything together legit. So when that time happens, you know, I just want to get bigger and have something because I, I don't like want to work for people ever again. Yeah, I don't think I would make a good employee. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing this too long. I probably would be the worst employee and I'd be mouthy on top of it. I just don't think I would make a good employee right now. Um, it, as far as growing and scaling, it's you. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to tell me that you're, you have picked your legal entity for now. You either need to be a sole proprietor or an LLC. And that involves being registered with the state. You need a tax ID number. And the reason why you need that is because when people want to 1099 you, you don't want them to leave that your W-9 sitting around with your social security number on it. There's Once you have fraud, it's so hard to get it all fixed. It takes hours. And, and you just want to cry and drink scotch in the corner. Um, and, then, and then you have to you get helpers and you have to come up with a training system and see what works and what doesn't work. And then you have to decide before you train if you're going to do what Jamie has done and have 1099s, or if you're going to do what Sheila has done and have, um, I mean, sorry, Jamie has W-2s and Sheila has 1099s. So you have to decide what business model you want to run. Um, I'm seeing in the last 18 months, people are running hybrids. So they have part of a team that's 1099 and part of a team that's W-2. They just have two different accounts. Um, it just depends on where you want to go, but you should by yourself, if you do it the right way and you price the right way, um, you should be able to pull in six figures your very first year if you do it correctly. Okay, you said you yeah, I I'm not like there yet, and I huh. feel like my pricing is is off because like when I first started out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do by the hour, do like thirty five dollars an hour. So now as I've been doing this, you know, now for seven months, I feel like I'm worth a lot more because I'm like such much of a better cleaner I can have somebody come and help me and like I'm super detailed in what I do and I feel like my prices are are too low and mm -hmm. I don't know like how like how I would even do that by telling current clients like yes I need to increase them um for instance I did like a deep clean and I was there for five hours by myself and I only got 185 and I was so, so mad. I'm like, I wanted to walk out of the house. I was just like so mad. I'm like, this isn't even worth it to me. Right. Because you should have made three or 400 bucks, right? Yes. Okay. There, there's a process to that. Um, char the national average right now is about 55 to... Um, for, for us in here, I call I consider Arizona Middle America because it's not on the coast. Um, it's like 55 to 75 per hour unless you're on the coast. Like Jamie's in California and has a really high operating expense. It's like legitimately $95 to $110 an hour per person on either coast. Um, and, that, and that varies. So it's I try to push you guys to charge the most amount of money. Not everyone is comfortable charging those rates. It's a scary process, but there is a process to it. Like last year, you should have given three price increases, two for inflation, one for the annual, because you should automatically at the end of the year have a price increase that happens. Now with your legacy clients, will they ever be up to the current market rate? Never. They will never be. What will happen is you're going to bump them up and you're going to be excited about the money that you just gave yourself but eventually they're going to fall off your schedule and you're going to acquire new clients who are going to pay what you're supposed to be being paid. And um, taking the pricing blueprint masterclass is probably the easiest and most economical thing for you to do. I think it's $49.99 and it walks you through the process of everything. It comes with the price increase um, bootcamp and the price increase template. It's um, you just have to follow the suit. It does take practice and you do get a lot of no's, but we're considered a luxury service. It's not a necessity. And I know people treat us like we are a necessity and that they don't want to, they don't feel that we deserve to earn top dollar, but we do. 
And you're seeing that we were considered essential during COVID, right? Yes. So we were one of the few industries that was, and if it wasn't for the cleaners, I mean, yeah, we saw the doctors dancing, you know, because they weren't doing anything, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> it was the cleaners that kept us going. I mean, how many times, it was the cleanest I'd ever seen any outside gas station um, restroom in my life. I was shiny, like spit shine, stuff I'd never seen before. I was like, wow, this really is clean, right? <laughs> so you have to look at it from that point. It's there is an opportunity for you to make it. When I was a solo cleaner, I, I was just like you. I charged twenty five dollars an hour, and I quickly realized that two hundred bucks a day was not going to make it. And then if someone went out to lunch or they they wanted to cut my hour, it's, so you're you're putting it in the hands of the homeowner. When in actuality, if you learn to charge flat rate, you're in and out of there. And then when you get faster, you've made you can bump yourself up even more because you shaved a half hour off your time. So instead of a two hour, a two and a half hour house, it ends up being a two hour house. So then you end up making sixty dollars an hour just by default because you became better at your craft, right? Right. And I am like super detailed. So sometimes I get a little bit carried away because I want things to look really, really good. So something that would be like more of a maintenance clean, like I just clean it very thoroughly. And right. I think that's why people have me keep coming back because I like I'm good at what I do. But then I'm feeling like like, oh, this I'm not getting enough money for this. So right. it makes me not want to do it. It, it, and you have to have minimums um, for it. So like uh, a deep cleaning, we have a minimum of $300 that goes up from there. I talk all about this in the, in the, in that class um, and, and learning to differentiate between regular maintenance cleaning and deep cleaning and not giving them the deep cleaning. <laughs> so that's probably going to be the hardest part. And if you have time, Jeff Campbell, who is the godfather of speed cleaning, I believe he came up with the whole method. He's retired now, but he has a business in San Francisco and his claim to fame is that he ha he works in triples. He doesn't work in solos and um, they can clean a whole house in 45 minutes, three levels in San Francisco. So check him out on YouTube. It's called Jeff Campbell speak cleaning for the pros um, and, and learn that method so that you become faster and that um, things are not taking you as long and be, res resist the temptation of giving something extra. Um, I mean, I've talked to many of you guys about how, leaving money on the table, right? Uh, okay can you wipe down the baseboards we wiped down the baseboards in like the entrance to the garage from the kitchen and we wipe the baseboards down consistently in the bathrooms because it's all the toilet paper dust and hair sticks to it but we don't actually wipe the baseboards we'll dust them if they want them wet wiped we actually charge it's an additional hundred dollar starting charge depending on the size of the home added on to the regular cleaning, adding laundry, picking up before you clean is an extra service charge. Doing the sunroom or the patio furniture is an upcharge. Um, charging to clean the inside of an oven or refrigerator is now $95. So that class is only $49. I feel like I can do that because I feel like that's probably what I need to do because I'm, I'm definitely underpricing and I'm just completely exhausted. Like after one house, if I'm there for three hours, up to five hours for one house, depending on what they want, like I can't do more than that because I'm I'm wiped out because I'm doing right. so much. Well, you're giving them an a la carte because you're charging by the hour. It's 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 like McDonald's, yeah. right? You can go to any McDonald's in the world with the exception of India because they don't eat cows and get a Big Mac, right? You have to streamline their processes to make it easier for yourself. It's not up to them if you spend three hours or five hours. When I when I worked up past the 100K and I was pulling in 150, I, I did three houses every single day, five days a week. I was like, like this big monster who just went around like cleaning. Um, and, and, then, and I worked it. I, I'm looking for the golden unicorns. I'm looking for the homes that I have weekly clients that pay us 475 bucks a week. I have other clients that are 525 a week. I have some of the really larger houses, but they pay because they understand what it is. Then there's the other side of it. You know, you come in a large house thing. I've only been paying a hundred bucks and the girl was crappy. Well, <laughs> you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. And like, I have a, I have a couple weeklies and like my one weekly is 175 and they don't have me do the basement because they're renovating, but it's just like a single guy that works or lives there. And it's about 5,000 square feet, but it's like a clean house to clean. 
if that makes any sense. It, like, so I can get it done maybe in two hours and it's 175 that I do. And it's just like a basic clean and it's like my favorite house. And I was like, I need more houses like that. That's because that's the only house I actually enjoy doing right now. Yeah, it's, uh, I would take the class and then um, obviously if you had any questions, you could reach out. Um, Miss Sheila, you had something to say? At my age, it doesn't stay long. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh. I, I so oh. get it. <laughs> but so, you know, I do want to know, I, I think I purchased that class. I don't know. How would I know if I purchased it? I would still have it, right? Or what? Um, it should still be available. Um, the there was a transition period where I let everyone know that it was going to a different platform. So if it was purchased um on the old method, I think Dropbox is actually not even going to carry their shop anymore. Um, they're deleting it um, I think May 1st. So I believe it's still there. Um but it, it's been, I actually refilmed it and then I, we added a lot to it because we, um, you know, had it at the same price for two years. So we increased the price, added more stuff to it. So that way you get a real fulfillment of the pricing increase um, masterclass. So I don't know if it's still available on the other platform or not, because they were talking about taking things. If, if you wanted your proprietary information, you need to start taking it down. I talked to the VA, so I don't know if she started that or not, um, but okay. you can, you can look to I'll, see. I'll look at my checkbook. <laughs> yeah. And then let, let me know. But yeah, I definitely recommend um, that you the VAD, that should, if you're going to purchase anything, um, it legitimately has been watched over a thousand times. <laughs> so uh, and it, it really it, and it, it's very specific to our industry. It, it's just, it's exactly for us. It's not for commercial cleaning. It's just regular maintenance, top to bottom and move in, move out. Those are the three biggies that you should focus on your very first year. And then there's, you know, other um, dynamics that you could learn along the way um, that will help you earn more money. So um, does anybody else have any questions? Kara, did you have any questions? I know you're driving, but you might have questions. Nope. Uh, I do have a question, actually. Sure. In my area, um, like oven cleanings and refrigerator cleanings, mm -hmm. I want to say 85% of the companies here are only charging $50 each. So when I, um, I raised it to 75 for the refrigerator and 85 for the oven, and I've been having a hard time, which those are not my favorite things to do anyways, but with move out cleans, it kind of comes in, comes with it. Uh, um, it's up to you to decide. We, I, I don't want my cleaning techs around the chemical of the oven cleaner. I really don't want to clean your oven, but if you want me to clean it, that's the price you're going to pay. Um, it, as far as getting an add-on charge, it's 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 an a la carte item. So the move out cleaning is basically when we're wet wiping the baseboards, the doors, the door jams, the ceiling fans that are accessible by a four foot ladder, the switch plates. Um, and then, you know, then we're catching the bathrooms up and we're vacuuming inside and in, of the cabinets. Sorry, it's my husband. He knows I'm live, but he never listens to me. <laughs> and, <laughs> ever. It goes in and out. He's just, you know, he's like a blonde butterfly, right? So um, it, it, th those are the items. And then if you want to add on your oven or your refrigerator, that is the option you have. And if they say, well, other people are doing it, say, you know, we just, that's just what we charge. That's just what it costs. You can lower it, but I guarantee every time you lower it, it's going to be an awful clean. It's always like, Oh, we had someone, I don't remember, they were learning how to cook and they exploded something in there and they kept cooking and it just kept burning on to the surface. So the poor girl sends me this picture. I'm like, this isn't going to be $95. <laughs> this is, this is a fire hazard. You should take the whole unit out and throw it away. <laughs> it's oh my just, goodness. <laughs> it was like this thick. I don't, I don't even know how anyone could have cooked and not caught on fire, but maybe it did. Maybe it burned every single time. I don't know, but you, you just never know. So you have to decide um, whether your upcharge is going to be the same as the competition or if you're going to charge more. They are a lot of work, as you know. Yes, they are. Kara, did you have a question? 
Yes. Um, so I was just wondering a little bit if you can give kind of some general information about commercial cleaning. I know that there's so many different factors, but yes, how you price <laughs> different. <laughs> kind of just in general, how you price differently from residential. I had my first opportunity to quote um, a general office and um, cleaning. It's pretty simple, smaller office. But um, I haven't heard back anything. I'm going to follow up with them. I was just giving them the little bit of time to cover it. But um, I was just having a really hard time getting information from my area okay. on what pricing is here. <laughs> so just curious what you sure. can offer. There, there's a lot of variables with that. So when you're asking, if, if someone is asking you for a commercial bid, and, and I've made several posts about this in the group, it's because there's such a variety of buildings. There is different grades of buildings. So if you Google um, grades of commercial building for cleaning, you have A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? Um, a is going to be like your most newest and latest and greatest building like Google. Like if you went to the Google headquarters, it's all glass, it's all shiny, it has the latest technology, probably has weird floors in it. I mean, there's all of the latest and greatest, whatever. And then like D is going to be a 1920s bungalow that used to be a house that has been converted into an office and it might be an office for um let's say a paralegal or it might be um an office for your skate park entrepreneur it, there's so many different variables so when people ask me for help with a bid i need to know frequency is the number one um question well actually the number one question is how i'm going to get paid because that you want to know it's most commercials net 30. And if you're running really large projects, not everyone can afford to run payroll and wait to net 30, especially when you're banking out $20,000 payrolls every single week, you've got to have some sort of cash flow, right? Um, and then there's a trust factor, right? Is this person going to screw me over? And I will only let people get to a certain amount. Um, and I make them sign paperwork because I've been screwed over and nothing is worse than eating five or six grand because so-and-so decided to go belly up and not pay any of the vendors who happen to be left over. So, um, so frequency and then the type of commercial building. So there is medical and medical goes medical dental, right? And then there's surgery, surgical. And um, what I'm seeing is because people are not coming back to their jobs because the cost of living has gotten so high. So all of the older janitorial people who were just writing it out for their retirement, who were making 15 bucks an hour, for example, at the school are, are in their nineties who shouldn't be working who are still working because they can't find a replacement janitor. So we're starting to see all of this, this pattern happen, right? So you need to know what type of uh, office it is. If it's, you know, is it Google type of office or is it corporate office? Is it a medical? Is it manufacturer? Is it like factory? I mean, there's so many, to, is it a post-construction cleaning? That goes 35 cents a square foot and you're doing, you know, a hundred thousand square you feet at a time. Don't do so Uh-oh. Is everything okay? Okay, so um, so you have to be careful on what you're doing with the actual bid. So then you you follow it up. You got to figure out how many bathrooms, you know, and then it, it does, is there a kitchen? Are you gonna like? I've had bad experiences. We have a dish clause because what happens is they they think that the cleaner is going to do all their dishes. So the, all the people who are eating lunch in the cow in the lunch room use all the dishes and they leave them there. So once a week you're in there doing like 55 pieces of dishes and that's not what you bid it for. So I had to pad in a $35 fee per incident if they left dishes in there. Well, if they don't have a janitorial closet and they have no way for you to actually fill up your mop bucket, that's something to think of too. Cause if you farm that out to somebody, they're not gonna go to the hose bib out by the trash can in the middle of winter to get fresh water. It's just not gonna happen. These are all things that you need to consider. Are all the offices locked? It takes extra 10 minutes to lock and unlock offices, right? Because we we were, um, for a long time, we were known as a rehab town. So we had a lot of people who um, came through for recovery. So we, the, the offices had to be locked for medical reasons, right? Um, these are all, what type of flooring is it? Is it, you know, the, the vinyl? Is it the um, progressed plank? I mean, there's so many different variations. And if it's, if you only like, when we had a lot of rehab houses, we had um, male and female. Well, males are not exactly tidy when it comes to 
making it into the toilet or the urinal, right? It's like they're having conversations and it just kind of goes from left to right. You're just like, dude, <laughs> this is not cool. And so that takes extra time too. Um, we did a printing press um, printer here in town for a long time. And um, there you have to know about printers. Like we could only feather dust the printers. And if you, they, they were $200,000 printers, right? Nobody wants to be the person that ruins that. So you had to do a lot of vacuuming. So that took a long time too. You didn't necessarily have to do a lot of mopping because they dry dusted. So there's all of these different variations for you to come up with your price. Is there an alarm? You know, what happens if the person sets off the alarm or if you lose your key fob, what happens then, right? These are all things that you need to consider. Key fobs are expensive. They can be 250 bucks and you have to have a key clause for, for whoever you farm that out to, right? You need to sign a key. If you lose the key fob, you're, you're responsible. Not the, I left it at the grocery store. Why are you carrying the key fob with you in the grocery store, right? <laughs> it's just, just stuff I've learned along the way. So these are all considerations for you. So with your office, you said it's a simple office. What kind of office is it? Ms. Kara, I don't know if you're in a spot to talk back. So it could be if it's weekly. Sorry. No, you're totally I, fine. I know you're driving. So oh, what kind of office is it? It is um, an electrical company. Um, and you you did help me um, on my post. Um, it's hardwood floors three toilets, a shower. Um, they don't really have a lot of traffic in the building. Did I already say it's only four people? Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, but I, I quoted 225 um, every three weeks. And then the fourth one I did at 285, which is more um, okay. in-depth cleaning on the desks. And um cobwebs and baseboard dusting doing that once a month a little bit more of a deep clean and then I also priced them out at a deep clean initial as well okay perfect um, a lot of people don't realize that you should have an initial clean when you're taking over a building from someone um, because it's not your responsibility that they refuse to pay someone top dollar to do their job the right way so you shouldn't have to like spend all of your time trying to catch this building up because they didn't do what they were supposed to do on their end um, I actually had a lady here. They um, have a, it's a studio. It's a podcast studio and it was all guys and she's the oh, token female and she goes, it really needs to have a deep clean. And she got really upset with me because she wanted me to come. She was having 15 companies come in and give her a bid. Oh my <laughs> I, God. I flat out said, you know, you just told me that 15 companies are coming to give you a bid. This is what I think my price. Well, I want you to come down and give it to me in person. I'm like, that's not happening. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, why would I come in and give you a bid if you were having 15? I go, clearly price is a thing for you. And it doesn't seem like it's going to work out between us. If that should change, let me know. But she was really mad. <laughs> I'm just like, who, who has time to go compete against 15 other companies, right? Yeah. So does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. How can you tell when a construction when something is a true construction clean suppose someone says well we just had a little work done in the kitchen they always say that <laughs> right. but so how do i respond so um when they say that i let them know that we'll bid it as a normal cleaning and if we walk on site you will be um it'll the, your price is going to be adjust it, there's no because i have people do that too they say oh i've just had a little work done you walk in and it's two fingers of dust every single surface right okay <laughs> so, okay so, um, and you just say, you know, I need you to let me know, um, when you, when you walk the property is what I tell my cleaning techs after you've done walk it, can you please call me? And then I have them give me the dirt code, right? So we know the dirt code from one to 10, 10 being is, oh my God, run. And one is like, do you really live here? Um, and I'll say, okay, so what on the jerk code from one to 10, what is it? And they'll say, oh, it's about a nine. And then you can ask the client the same way. Sometimes they'll be honest. Sometimes they won't. They'll say, oh, it's a, you know, it's a three, it's not that dirty. But if the cleaning tech is saying it's a, a, a seven or a nine, then that's an adjustment in price. That's a post-construction cleaning. 
And that is priced differently. As you guys all know, it starts at 50 cents a square foot um, for single dwelling. So it, and it's all vacuuming, wet wiping and drying. Now, sometimes homeowners will do a uh, little work and they weren't very clean to begin with. So then you have to do an actual cleaning and a post-construction cleaning. I recommend that you get at least 65 cents a square foot on those. But yeah, I just call them up and say, you know, I'm looking at the photos that Susan sent me. And um, I, I know that you said this was a regular maintenance cleaning, but from what I'm seeing, this is going to have to be a, a post-construction cleaning. And you've already taken your deposit. So if they say, well, I don't want to move forward, then they forfeit their deposit that you took. And if you've had them sign a contract, you, you, it's, it's, it's yours. But I've had people do that to me too. I've noticed that a lot of builders are skipping the middle clean now. So there used to be a rough, like, uh, and a, like, a, a, like, I don't want to say polish, like a smooth is what I called it, because you're kind of going in there after the rough and, you know, repolishing everything down. And then there was the polish. Now the builders are skipping the middle one. They're doing the rough and then they want the polish. And so, but they want the polish to be 10 cents a square foot when it actually should probably be about 35 or 40 cents a square foot. So um, the, be on the look. Does that make sense? The price is high, but you said 60, what'd you say, 50 or 60 percent? It, it's 50 <laughs> cents a square foot right now for um, single dwelling. When you get into the larger, because I've done every, I've done 1800 of these. When you get into the larger building, it is, it is a little bit lower. It's about 35 cents a square foot because you're doing so much more volume. Um, I've see, even seen some jobs where you could get away with 25 cents a square foot, depending on what type of building it was. <laughs> but when you have a thousand, a hundred thousand square feet or more, it gets expensive, but I've seen it. I've seen, um, there was a, I helped someone the other day. It was a airplane manufacturing area where they were going to pull stuff off and rebuild and then send them back. And it was a brand new building and she ended up getting 37 cents a square foot and it was 225,000 square feet. So it was a big job. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more question if someone has another question. Yes, hybrid okay. cleaners having independents and employees. I thought that IRS frowns at that. Right. Oh, that's correct. The, um, they, you, you have all your ducks in the row. Your girls um, all are long-termed helpers um they all carry their own insurance you have them sign a vendor agreement that's all it, just the the latest thing i have heard um for misclassification is that you um you, you don't make them wear a uniform they drive their own vehicle they work solo they provide their own equipment so it, to the best of my knowledge you're following the rules that i follow okay so then i can have employees a group of employees also you could. I do recommend that if you do do that, that you have a separate business bank account for the W-2s. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. That way, if, if you are audited, you can say, well, because it's almost like you have a different company, right? So all of the allocated funds for the W-2s are here and all of the allocated funds for the 1099s are here. Okay. Okay. So you would basically be running two operations and you want to make sure that they're not crossing over and there's no gray line. Like you can't be a W-2 one day and a 1099 the next. These guys are just W-2s and these guys are just 1099s. So then I should set up another account with Stripe also. Yes, because you that's, it's a separate entity is how you're operating. But you know, your, your W-2s, they, they don't sign a vendor agreement. They, you take taxes out, right? You pay yeah. that to the state and the federal and whatever else. I'm the only W two. I'm a you know they're they're all independent contractors. Right, and and that's how I work it with mine. That's how I'm structured. Okay. Okay. But you know, obviously, check with your accountant, um, someone who is familiar with all of the ins and outs of your financial situation. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But yeah, I've seen a lot of hybrids pop up this year. It's half. Half of them are 1099s and half are 10 to W-2s because not everyone is comfortable being their own boss, right? They want the the security of having a paycheck, knowing what, I mean, they don't have to, it's easy, right? You just show up and get a paycheck. It's it's easier than having to, you know, do a song and dance to earn dinner, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not everyone's comfortable doing that, right? That's true. Any other questions? Alexandria? 
All right. Well, today, this will conclude our roundtable meeting. Thank you so much for participating. It's been fun. I love all these questions. Um, obviously, if you guys have any further questions, please reach out. You guys have a wonderful Easter, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. All you right, too. Bye-bye.